You're listening to RockWire.com, online radio that rocks. From RockWired Sound in Albuquerque, New Mexico, of all places, this is RockWired Radio Profiles with your host, Brian Lush, exclusively at RockWired.com. Today, RockWired gives it up for the band Station and their eagerly awaited self-titled debut album. Stick around for more. RockWired Radio Profiles is powered by RockWired Media, LLC. A limited liability company. Please stand by. Welcome to the latest edition of RockWired Radio Profiles, exclusively at RockWired.com. I'm your host, Brian Lush, and the music is out there. And today, we're giving it up for the band Station and their eagerly awaited self-titled debut album. I've waited, personally, I've waited a long time for this album to come out. It's finally here, and I can't stop playing it. RockWired had a chance to speak with Patrick Kearney and Chris Lane of Station regarding the new album, and here's how the interview went. Well, it's great to hear from you guys, and I'm excited for this album that you guys have out now. You've already got a video for one of the songs, and, you know, seems to be get it gaining in momentum. So how do you guys feel about the finished work now that it's out there for people to get a listen to? Go ahead. We're, uh, we're really proud of this one. It's a, it's a you know, it, it was a long time in the making, but I also feel like uh, we left no stone unturned with this one. We got out exactly what we wanted to get out, so... Uh, it's 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 great. It feels great. Mm-hmm. One of the things that took so long is the fact that since we did it pretty much all ourselves, um, you know, no no outside business involved. Basically, it was the studio and us kind of going in there and just making sure it sounded the way we did. And you know, it's very much a trial by fire kind of thing because uh, I've never recorded a full length album before, and to go immediately from being, you know just a guitar player or just a songwriter or whatever to being you know, a producer and having conversations with you know the band saying how does it sound how do we shape it it just turns into this process that is so overwhelming at points but rewarding ultimately because you know you hear that finished product and it's really your baby because you created it Right, and and you know, and, and you guys are sort of have that one foot in nostalgia, but at the same time, that other foot in being very contemporary, and and this album is, you know, it, it just sounds amazing. I mean, talk about all that went into it since it was just you guys behind the the recording console. It sounds like. Well, we had um, we had an engineer, uh, two engineers actually, um, who did it with us. We worked with the studio owners, and uh, you know, it's funny because. Definitely our influences come from, like you said, kind of a nostalgic background. Um, there's definitely, you know, a lot of reference to uh, rock and roll as it used to be. But at the same time, you know, I mean, the album is made by people who live in 2015. So it's really just kind of our 2015 take on where rock and roll should be. And, you know, we, we've had a lot of conversations with people who you know, talk about the album and and even though positive, they'll call it like AOR melodic rock, which is completely accurate. But then all of a sudden, in the same breath, you say, well, what does that mean? It just means that it's melodic rock. It doesn't mean that it's 80s, 70s, 90s. It's just, it's that. And a lot of people kind of, you know, when they hear it, they're like, well, it sounds like melodic rock recorded modern day. And I'm, my response to that is just, no, dude, it's rock. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's really no distinction on it. It's just a matter of how we view rock and roll in today's day and age. And I also understand that you guys have a new member. You have a new drummer this time around. So talk about him and and uh, and what it is you think he brings to the table for the, the for this band at this juncture. Um. Well, yeah, Justin. Uh, Justin's great. He, uh, you know, he. We um, started uh, looking around and. Uh, Ended up picking him up, and and uh, he's been he's been really great. Uh, he wasn't involved on the recording of the album, okay. But uh, we were able. Uh, so uh, once the album was done, though, we um, you know we we needed we needed a drummer, so uh, we ended up 
Well, I, I really don't even know how we got him. To be completely <laughs> honest, so we met him a long, long time ago, randomly when we were shopping around for studios to record the EP. And he happened to be in one of the rooms that we were in, and um, he just kept in touch. I mean, it, it's pretty much one of those things, you know. We've we've kind of built our business with uh, the live performance to play with like a revolving set of drummers. So Justin has been the drummer that we've been you know with now for a couple of months, and like you know it's feeling good and it's going that way. So that's kind of the way we we operate, and uh, it's worked out really well so far. And the music video that you guys have for the single, Are You Sleeping Alone? I mean, it just brings me back to 1989, you know, Headbangers Ball. So <laughs> talk about <laughs> who helped you with it. <laughs> well, we, uh, uh, we have... Oh, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead, Chris. Well, we filmed it um, up in Syracuse with an up-and-coming director. Um, and uh, we actually have two videos out currently, one for that and then for Just to Kill. And then coming up in the next week, you'll see a new music video come out. And, uh, you know, our, me- our mentality with all this is that one of the reasons why I don't think, I don't think the consumer necessarily trusts musicians anymore is that there's no more real easy way other than, like, a Spotify or something to be given the new music unless you're on, like, major radio or something like that. So, you right. know, if you hear a good song, you might say, oh, that's a good song, but I don't know if that necessarily drives your average music buyer to buy the album. So, therefore, you know, I mean, if... Uh, if um, you get to this point where, you know, you can say, hey, look, here's a song, here's another song, here's another song, and you do that with music videos, it really helps everybody because it shows and it proves that, hey, look, you know, we have something of quality to offer you, and here's a way to get it to you. And, you know, I mean, everyone has four minutes and 15 seconds to spare, so, uh, you know, a good video is a good thing. No, music so videos, too. Go ahead. I was going to say, the other thing, too, um, you know, just to kind of dance along this is uh, one of the reasons why we decided to put out a 15 song album was because we wanted to provide as much media as possible to people you know like Chris said uh, you know a lot of times uh, you, you know the consumers don't really trust musicians anymore and so what we kind of wanted to do was instead of popping down because we have a ton of original material instead of chopping it down to you know something relatively small like you know the 8, 9, 10 song disc we really thought, you know what, if we have 15 songs on this album, somebody's going to like some of them, you know, and you have a, it's like casting a wider net as to, uh, you know, trying to get people to draw you in, and that's kind of uh, where we're going with these music videos as well, is, is the same idea, is, you know what, it might not be, um, you know, it might, we might not be making a video for your favorite song like right now, but like maybe we'll do it in the future, and we'll hopefully capture everybody that we possibly can with as much media as possible, you know? Yeah, not, not, to, not to correct you, Pat, but I actually think the real reason that there are 15 songs on the CD is because that's as many as the CD will hold. And that's true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, had, uh, we already have the second and third album planned out. I mean, it's mostly written even. I mean, we have so much original material that you know, we live in a, in a world where you can record easily and relatively cheap. Still very expensive for a small man, but cheaper in the sense that it doesn't cost a million dollars to make a good recording anymore. So, you know, if you can record it and you have something you want to show people, show it to them. And I can imagine that you guys got some shows lined up, you know, to help promote this thing along. Are there any shows that you're particularly excited about? Uh, we're, we're going, going out to Rocklahoma, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll be there next week. Oh, next fantastic. Week. Yeah, next week. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's going to be another big show, and uh, we're going to be hitting up, actually, uh, for the first time, we're going to be hitting up Omaha, which uh, I'm <laughs> I'm weirdly excited about because, uh, you know, I've never been, and uh, we don't get out west too often, so, uh, you know, it was just, that that's like a show I'm actually really looking forward to, to get, to gauge people out west and how they dig rock and roll music you know i actually know oh i actually know a band in omaha who's like along the same lines that you guys are on so what band? oh really yeah they're called 3d in your face okay. oh yes i as a matter of fact uh, when we're done here I'll, I'll i'll reintroduce you guys i mean you guys would be perfect together you know it's funny though because like you know you mentioned oh you find a band that you know you kind of think we belong with one of the cool things that we've kind of it's been happening and uh 
right now we're kind of solidifying is that towards the end of 2013, we really started to reach out to these new markets, you know, um, playing in areas like Myrtle Beach, playing in, um, uh, you know, we played in Georgia for the first time, in North Carolina. I mean, these places that are relatively far away from New York City where we live. And when we did this, we had people there play to, and it was cool, but this was also off the strength of literally four songs that had been out for a year. Right. So when when the albums come out now, and all of a sudden we're able to kind of, you know, pollinate the little areas with this new music and get spread faster and faster and faster, you know, we've got tours being booked now to the end of 2015. You know, we're going to be out in the Midwest again at the end of the year. We're going to be down in the South during July. Then there's another one in September and one in probably in the end of August. So, like, now the issue is just actually confirming everything so that we can properly announce because it's different than we've been because in the past it's been, hey, we've got a show here. It's going to be great. Now it's like, oh, we're going to do a string of shows here, come back, do a string of shows. So, you know, I feel like a real band. Nice. And talk about the inspiration for the song, Are You Sleeping Alone? Talk about how that one came about. Um, Are You Sleeping Alone is about basically kind of feeling like you want someone who you cannot have, uh, maybe because of distance, maybe because of timing, stuff like that. And it kind of poses the question, well, how do they feel? Um, basically, it was just kind of came about from just a period of time in, in, in my life anyway, where... Like, you know, feelings were very confusing, and it was just kind of like, I don't know what I want to do in terms of, like, my romantic life, and it kind of stemmed out of that, because, you know, there's nothing worse than kind of being unsure about how someone else feels about you if you care about them, so it's kind of where that song comes from. And, uh, and so, let's see, I, 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 and, and from the start of this band, up until now, what's been the biggest surprise for you guys? What's, you, you, well, what's transpired that you didn't think would happen but did well I'm gonna sort of go on a limb here but like I'm gonna for me personally it has been uh, the reaction to this new album and I, I'm not saying that to sound like I was trying to be pessimistic but like there have been people that have been contacting us like completely freaking out about how much they love the album and it, it's it was almost surprising to me because it was, <laughs> it was just at one point it was just like I think this person liked the album more than I liked this album and I wrote it you know like <laughs> so uh, that's that's been really cool that has been a, a really big surprise that has come out of recent times of just like wow people are really listening to this and they're really being touched by this and it's so cool you know it's, it's something that was like I, I knew that I knew that you know, hoped anyways that people were going to like it, but I didn't realize they were going to like it as much as they did. So it's just, it's just really cool feeling. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, you know, like kind of along the lines of what Pat said, you know, the band, the band has surprised me in the sense that, like, you know, it's very much the product of of what we put into it. So you know, we spent a lot of time working on music. We spent a lot of time on the road. We spent a lot of time, you know, talking to press or doing whatever. But at the same time, when people surprise you in the lengths that they'll go to to find out either more or to be friends with you, that's what always surprises me, you know? And, like, we've, we've played shows where, like, we'll play in the... Like, we played a show in, uh, I think it was, like, Wilmington, Delaware. And these New two Pat. guys, they just came up to me afterwards and they said, hey, you know, we traveled, like, two and a half hours to be here because, you know, we love this. And I was... My <laughs> response was just kind of like, Really? You know, and, and it's just, it's really humbling, it's really cool, because, you know, we're getting outreach from people from the album in, like, Poland, and, and like, Slovakia, and, and stuff like that, and, you know, I mean, no one knows who I am in northern Jersey, so, like, you know, it's really nice to see that where the album is going, it's affecting people to the point where they feel like they want to get involved, and that's what it's all about, it's about getting people involved so that we can grow it, and grow it, and then eventually everybody can get involved. Well, I think the music, you know, the the reaction that that you're describing doesn't sound all that surprising to me. It, you know, your music has a, it, it sort of has a directness that's missing in a lot of, say, the current indie scene. You know, oh, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I, I really think it does. I think you know we've gone, we we've had a little too much. You know, foot stomping and 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 accordion playing lately. I I really think people, <laughs> I, I really think no people need this kind of thing. 
What's that? I said there are no mandolins on this album. And that's refreshing. <laughs> and I think that's why I think that's why you're getting the response you're getting. So good on I you guys, so. you know? I think everybody at the end of the day likes fun and I I really have a hard time believing that if you hear something that just makes you happy or reminds you of something that you can relate to in your life, I mean, most of our songs are about things like love, relationships, stuff like that. Everybody knows that stuff. So I find that, you know, people can latch onto it for different reasons. And, you know, like I said, it just gets everybody involved, and I love that. Check out the band at their official website, www.stationband.com. Rock on. That's going to do it for this edition of Rockwired Radio Profiles. A special thanks goes out to Patrick Kearney and to Chris Lane for their time and, more importantly, the music. For Rockwired, I'm Brian Lush, and remember, keep your eyes forward, never look back, and make it up as you go. Rockwired Radio Profiles is powered by Rockwired Media, LLC. A limited liability company and is available exclusively at rockwired.com. Online radio that rocks. Rock and roll.